why do you, okay, why do you think they are so unlikable? I think their complete lack of gratitude and their hubris. Like, no one's saying that it's fun to be in the royal family. I think we all can accept it's like, ah, that, that's probably shitty. But their, their complete lack of perspective that some people have real problems and they're not galvanizing any of their popularity to do any of those things about those problems. They have their performative foundation. Who knows what that does? I mean, what, what do they do besides complain? And her victim narrative is becoming, I think, very, very transparent. You know, for, and she just gives so many tells. Like, I didn't even know who Prince Harry was. Five-year-olds know who Prince Harry is. Like, are you dumber than a five-year-old? Like, where are you going with this? Is that supposed to be a feather in your cap? Like, just nothing adds up. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that was the part. I'm, life. I'm, I'm really indifferent on them. I really don't follow them. I, I don't know why. They don't evoke any emotion for me, which usually I do have a hot, I just, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I, to me, I just don't find them either way um, compelling. Sure. But I do have to say with that Oprah interview, when she said that part of not knowing about, I mean, I always say I, like not knowing about the royal family or how difficult, I mean, I- came from bumfuck Maine. I mean, my own relatives would talk about like, oh, you never want to be a part of that. Not that I was totally married. Totally. But it's I mean, a ridiculous you know, assertion. Everybody knows what the monarchy is all about, which is, I mean, Diana taught us that, you know, how controlling right. they are of you. But wait a sec. This was, this is interesting that you, you say, and I think people miss this point. You actually say at one point, you, you've seen her physical driver's license because yeah, she I have. was, a person that was a, a source for you guys, or I don't mm -hmm. know if it was for, for star, but it was for mm -hmm. a tabloid. You say that she was yeah. a source. What does that mean? She was, she was in our system somehow. I honestly don't know like how it could have been. They did like a spread on her apartment when she was on suits. I'm not sure, but I do know that they would get, you know, ID and stuff from sources, but yeah, I've seen it. Her driver's license says white. So and every time you say this on your podcast mm -hmm. platform, do people just mm -hmm. like, they must just destroy you, I guess. <laughs> so no, you know what? Not anymore. And what, what I find interesting is the people who defend her the most, their, their reasoning is almost always racial. Like, well, she's black and I'm black. And I'm like, okay, girl, but like, you have probably actually suffered hardships from being black because you're legitimately black. You're not half white. You're not, you don't have like a white dad to protect you. Like you- she is co-opting your experience and the experience of people who've actually suffered from probably quite a bit of racism and prejudice and low expectations. I don't know that that was her experience until it became convenient for that to be her experience. And I think that's what icks me out. It icks me out when people co-opt the experience of females in general. Oh, I'm a girl too. No, the fuck you're not. Like, don't act like you know our experience and you've walked in our shoes because one day it's convenient for you to amplify that. Why do you think, I mean, you and Bethany Frankel are kind of two outspoken critics of Megan. Yes. And you I love her. <laughs> I went on a date with her fiance. <laughs> oh, really? Paul? You went on a date? Not, with while, not while they're engaged. Like this is before. <laughs> Wait a minute, girl. Now. Wait, we could have had that $2 million rock on your finger. What? You yeah. And Paul? Okay, wait a minute. How did you, oh. Paul? I, I was freshly divorced and my, one of my friends set us up just on a lunch date and he was so lovely and so smart and so sweet. And I was very much in the place where I was looking for a fuck boy. And I found one, I ended up finding one, but yeah, I was <laughs> to appreciate someone stable and smart and emotionally healthy. So Not at all. So Paul was looking for a serious partner and you weren't there. You wanted a fuck boy. I can't say that Paul was looking for a serious partner, but he easily, he should have been because he was and is a very stable, good person. But I was just like, ah, I ended up dating a 21 year old college hockey player. So that's, that's, not that's a bad the path one. I took. Oh, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, it's not a bad one. But I, Bethany, I've interviewed her a few times and she's awesome. So I think they're probably a great little match. Do you think they'll actually get married? They've been engaged now for a while. And of course she's- horrible divorce. I mean, do you think she'll really get married? I don't know. I wouldn't blame her if she didn't. I could easily, I think people should be perma fiancés. Why not? Or have a wedding, have a wedding. You don't need to get legally married. You don't need to do it. Especially if you've been through a gnarly divorce, both her and Paul are very successful. Like why, 
Why get the government involved? I don't know. I know. It's, yeah, it's wild. Mm -hmm. um, I was, yeah, okay, obviously, you know, Bethany, but you and Bethany get a lot of backlash about Megan. Why do you mm -hmm. think people are so, I mean, people seem to like, I don't know. They go all out for Megan. It's like Megan, Beyonce. Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's some people that just like, oh my God. It's like oh, they're Selena Gomez. Oh yeah, Selena Gomez. You get, oh my God. Yeah, you you get dragged every time. Oh yeah. Okay, why, mm -hmm. what is it about these women that <clears throat> they're, I guess, exempt from criticism? Usually- when people have a parasocial response to a celebrity, like they have an inordinate connection to them and an inordinate protection of them. Like we all like, I like my favorite celebrities, but it would even when I was like a fallout boy, like super fan and like the emo days, it would never, never occur to me to like fight with someone about Pete Wentz. Like that's super weird. That's weird. I could just be like, okay, you don't like them, whatever. I, the parasocial response, it's like they see some part of them in this person, or they see a similar path that it's like, if she, if we started on this path, like the Selena Gomez thing, I think it touches back to like these people identified with her and watched her show or her and Justin Bieber in a time in their life before something bad happened, before their parents got divorced, before, you know, they were bullied in high school or whatever that is. And it's like, if they can just keep Selena alive, they're keeping that that perfect part of their past alive that can be part of it mm. or like megan if someone's like i'm mixed race and my dad's a fucking deadbeat and my mom works three jobs and loves me god damn it i could be a princess too it, and maybe yeah maybe you can i don't know you know but it's when it that's good you want to have these people that you look up to but when it crosses into this place of their fate and their reputation is directly tied into my own self-worth that's weird. That's a parasocial relationship. And it's, it's the hallmark of a pretty, pretty unhealthy person. What is your take on like saying that, you know, has me thinking, what was your thought on Britney Spears and free Britney? I mean, now it's like, I almost say to these, I really want to do a TikTok, but then I'm like, do I want the hate of like all yeah. the free Britney, fan, free Britney fans? It's like, Okay, you guys advocated for all this. Now there's mm -hmm. a whole conspiracy that it isn't her really on oh her my Instagram, God. you know, and it's not her in this, you know, I mean, because there's been a lot of leaks now that she's really melting down and she's no longer with Sam. What do you think this whole free Britney movement in three years, we're going to look back and go, oh my God, this was horrible. Yeah. Or do you think yeah. she, it's still, she needed to be freed? I mean, I think there's something between the the situation she was living in and the situation that she's in now. Like, the woman is not healthy, and she doesn't seem like she's able to govern her own life. Why is that such a, a bad thing to admit? You know, if we, because these people who are like screaming to free Britney, it's like if you can if you can acknowledge and if we can all agree that mental health issues are not something you do on purpose to yourself. They're a genuine sickness, the way cancer is a sickness. If she had leukemia, would you be like, leave her alone, she's fine? No, you'd be like, get her to the fucking hospital, get her some treatment. But it's like, with this, it's like, nope, none of us are seeing this. No, And, and if you say that she's sick, you're the problem. It's going to kill her. And then it's like, and it's her fans who are enabling this. Like, but her conservatorship, I know somebody who was very close to her at that time. He's like, it, and he was telling me about it. He's like, it's it's so much worse. Like they would just keep her working and working and telling her that she had to keep doing like show after show after show, or she's not going to get her kids back, you know? And then they take her in front of the judge and the judge would be like, well, you're working. So you're doing well. So you need to stay in this conservatorship. And she's like, no, the only reason I'm working is to get out of it. And so it was just this loop that went around and around until she just burned out completely and short circuited. But I mean, she can't go back to that, but look at her now. I mean, she's not a well person. She's anyone you find at a truck stop. It's the saddest part is she worked all that, you know, she did uh, all that and now she doesn't even have, a, well, I mean, it's hard to say, right? If she has a relationship with her boys, but it certainly sounds oh like- Oh no, they, they say that they don't. And they say they, you know, we just want our mom to be stable and they're getting dragged all over the place. Like they're children, they're 13 years old, you know? And they're more eloquent and put together then their mom, like that's, that's heartbreaking. That's awful. It's so hard to watch. It's, it's mm -hmm. just so hard to watch. Cause she was, she's a person also beloved and you know, people don't want any criticism of her. In fact, now they think it's some sort of AI robot or body double acting. I know the conspiracy. Again, like what, why can people not be like, she's sick? We love her. And also she's sick. Why can these two I concepts not coexist? 
it's because it touches back to it's like there is something about her being like Brittany, like that they know that is unimpeachable. Like the, it has to be an unblemished fantasy forever. And it's like, well, that's going to cost that woman her life. So I... Yeah, I try not to get involved because I think it's so sad when you see her. And it, mm -hmm. it, that's all I think about. I just, you know, I don't even want to put that on. Like, uh, you know, sh hopefully, like, you yeah, said, there's a middle point of like, she's this amazing, legendary, you know, one of our yeah. biggest pop stars of all time. Oh, yeah. She can get help. And yeah, yeah. And she seems like such a sweet person, you know, oh, like not yes. a mean bone in her body. I know she loved having those kids. And I mean, she needs, she needs some kind of help, but. You know, I, it shouldn't be the fans. The fans should not be weighing in on her psychological help and treatment and evaluation. I, I don't understand why that's now become a democracy.